want to welcome you all to the First United Church of Christ here in Mount Pleasant. Our gospel today comes from Mark. It comes from chapter 13, verses 24 and 37. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be failing from the heavens, and the power of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near. At the very gates, truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away before all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or of that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch, for you do not know when a time will come. It's like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each of his work and his commands, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Watch therefore, and do not know, you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or at the cock row in the morning, unless he comes suddenly and find you asleep. But what I say to you, I say to all, watch. The gospel of our Lord shall be read. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you. For you are a rock and a redeemer. Amen. As part of our scripture text this morning, we had also read from the Hebrew text of Isaiah 64, verses 1 through 9. If you want, you can get your pew Bibles out or your Bibles at home and read this as I'm going along. Basically, Isaiah 64, 1 through 9 is a bit of a prayer. A prayer of Isaiah which petitions God to reveal himself in the power as was in the days of old. The people confessing of their hopelessness and sin and a pleading that God relents upon his anger. That he has compassion for his people and reestablishes his temple amongst them. And it is true of the Old Testament within the Old Testament history. When you look at the latter prophets, the, the ones who came later, the later books, it becomes apparent in the readings. These prophets did not have the communication that they once had in the times of old. It becomes apparent the prophets speak as, yes, they have a direct link to God, though they do not have that intimate wording or relationship which was of the Creator and His communication and through dialogue. They did not have that connect, that close link as did Abraham or Jacob or Joseph or Moses or, or Joshua or Elijah. And in them, like we see in Isaiah, there is this pleading of Israel to reestablish the prosperity that they once knew. A close relationship they want again with their, with their creator. A, a relationship that once gave them the authority to be reckoned with amongst the nations, being if they were truly God's people. But then right towards the end, in the last few books, there, we start to see this, this, these small suggestions that comes through the scripture. We begin to recognize God is beginning to speak again to the people in these final te Old Testament texts of the coming of a Messiah 
a new branch from the stump of Jesse, uh, someone that would be of the house of David. And as we have come to know the truth that this is Jesus Christ. And the prophecy of Christ's coming, as is all divine prophecy, it isn't not just locked in a time or back then. It's not just locked away from uh, being part of what was a designated time and place in history. This also speaks to us here in the now. As you read it, those scriptures that I read from Isaiah were I have read it, I guess. You could not help to feel how Isaiah's words also were speaking to our current situation. And those words will continue to speak to those of future times, to the closing of the age. This is why true prophecy is considered timeless. It not just speaks to those of a certain time frame. It can speak to us now. It will also speak to those of our future. Now our gospel today is also prophetic. And these words of prophecy are words of <coughs> Jesus. Jesus himself, himself speaking of the ending times. The focus of his message is to watch, be ready, stay vigilant. For no one knows, not even the angelic, and this creation will pass away, but not before Christ himself returns to save the remaining elect of the faith. Now back after Easter, you know, we had 40 days, he was instructing the disciples, and then we have his ascension where he rose to be with the Father. And as he rose, he also was instructing the disciples to go spread the word. He began a journey with the disciples that continues through us, promising, assuring us of his triumphant return and a final comprehensive in death. And he told them, as he well as he tells us, instructs us, to keep watch, to be ready. Do not become lax in the integrity of faith. Passage of time proves nothing. What is time to God? Passage of time is no assurance. The second coming will come at a time and era when the masses have become complacent, disrespectful, disregarding, Dilute, diluting of the truth of God and Jesus Christ. Gaslighting fallacious agendas, beliefs, especially fears amongst the people who have forgotten or never been even trained of the truths. So many distance themselves of the biblical truths and the prophetics that are timeless. But today marks the first Sunday of our pilgrimage in Advent. A sense of preparing as we prepare for the coming of Christ's birth. Advent focuses on the preparing of being in that mode of watch. Today as our theme for this first Sunday in Advent is to watch, but it is also of hope. Even in Israel's darkest times, there was always that glimmer of hope, the prophetic thread of dialogue stressing to the people to stay vigilant. We must not, we must not wait, but we will see, we must wait, I should say. Stay vigilant, do not lose your faith. You will see the coming of the Messiah in his glory. You know, Jesus does and will restore that intimate relationship that Isaiah felt was lacking. He restores it into each one of us if we seek in our hearts the truth of God. 
For God always has desired an intimate relationship, not only with the masses, but with each of us individually. This relationship cannot be broken. This is a covenant between God showed us and proven to us in Jesus Christ. It is with the Creator of His creation and that of a creation He is still in mode of making it more real. Amen. So we all for prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time and place and the people who have gathered together as a family in your name. We thank you for this time of worship and this time of preparation as we live those moments and days that led up to the birth of Christ, that new light of hope that shines amongst all of us. Help us, Lord, always to be ready and to stay vigilant in the faith so we may know your word and to be your witness to the world. Gracious God, there are those in this community who need your help and healing. We ask your grace to be upon them. People like Helen Bellinger, Minnie Edwards, the Anderson family, the Shaw family, Marie Hirsch, Kelly Butler, Bill and Deb Bogman, Ida, Ken, and Susan Wiltrow, Nancy Seabed, Ethel Benedict, and Mo Hawks. And gracious God, we're also going to raise these names to you now in our hearts for your help and for your healing. Gracious God, as you know best, keep help and protect and guide us in your ways. This we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is 